Hello and welcome. Um, first of all, a brief apology for starting late. Uh, so welcome to day four of the Global Art Forum 7, It Means This. This is day two in Dubai. Uh, this year's Global Art Forum looks at the phenomenon of definitionism. So we're taking terms that you know, terms that you don't know, defining them, redefining them, and building this lexicon of ideas and concepts for the 21st century. Yesterday, we heard uh, on the following topics. We heard about neologisms, uh, ABC d'air, production by Gilles, de Gilles Deleuze. Uh, we heard readings from one, two of our publications um, from the volume called Biography, which is available in the Forum Forum. We had a beautiful conversation about Middle East nervous anxiety, and we finished the day on the subject of careering. And today, uh, we're going to start off with a frant. These are uh, a format we've invented, uh, Friendly Rants, aka France. Uh, we're going to do a discussion about on the subject of place, specifically the city of Ramallah. We're going to do readings from the other book uh, that we produced this year, called, which is called Drone Fiction, followed by a kind of afternoon of uh, musically themed talks and performances. So we're going to have two takes on the idea of score and scoring. Uh, and culminating the day with a performance by Hassan Khan called Purity. Shimon? Uh, oh, we should have mentioned the fact that you were hearing um, Fatima Al-Qadiri's commissioned piece, uh, official soundtrack for an art fair, um, which very much fits in with uh, a theme that will uh, come into play later this afternoon, which is, uh, which is a kind of musical, uh, a musical theme. Um, and we have uh, extremely uh, thankful to um, Andre Vida, to Fatima Al Qadiri, and to Hassan Khan for all producing new original pieces of, of music and performance for us. We're going to start today, as HG said, with a frant, um, and we're going to start with uh, a word, uh, a term, futurity. So, how do you sell the future to people in the present? What language? feeds our imagination for what doesn't yet exist and may never yet exist. Will the future ever happen? Did it already? Are you too late? What time is the future anyway? Um, we could not have a more uh, apposite uh, and appropriate person to deliver this frant for us. Um, Douglas Copeland doesn't need too much introduction because he's now a regular feature of the Global Art Forum, and he's in fact bringing friends over to, to join this tribe, this, this nation state that we're building here on the island. And um, Douglas is a, a, a writer, a novelist, a, a visual artist, but I think why he's relevant for this particular topic uh, are two reasons. One, uh, he's, a, he's one of the, I think, the great neologists of the late 20th and the first and the beginning of the 21st century, Generation X, McJob, to just name two of the, of the neologisms and terms that have now entered into popular culture. He's also someone that um, I think uh, has been described as a seer of the near future. He's someone that um, manages to see that little bit further than most of us um, can. But those traces of the future, he manages to, um, to detect in what's happening today. And, uh, and that's, I think, uh, a trait that he, 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 he shares with perhaps one of his um, uh, heroes, which is David Bowie. That ability to, to kind of ride the wave just before the rest of us do, and in a sense, send us messages back from that moment. So will you please join in welcoming Douglas Copeland. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Uh, do a mic check. Is that working? Hi there. Um, uh, the future. Uh, Schumann asked me to figure out what the future might be like, how we can describe it. I was in China uh, in almost a year ago. And I was interviewing uh, workers who work in a facility that makes computer routing equipment in the suburbs of Shanghai. And I asked them all sorts of questions, and I was lucky. I had very good uh, translators with me. 
A, a question I asked everyone is like, what, what class are you? And what do you mean class? And they, well, I'm in, from North America, and if you ask someone in North America, nine out of 10 people are gonna say they're middle class. And well, so we're, well, we're not communists, we're not proletarian, we're definitely not middle class, though we aspire to it. And in the end, no one was actually able to identify the, the class they belong in. And then I started to realize that uh, our notions of the future are very much tied into uh, how we perceive ourselves as members of a class. And that sort of became the dominant thread for the series of words uh, we're gonna talk about today. A few general ones quickly. Um, this one, oh, and we're off. Um, smooped. Um, what is smooped? Um, the thing about living in the year 2013 is as a race, as a species, we have never been as intelligent as we are now, but we've never felt as stupid as we do right now. And glasses. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Um, someone was showing me an article in a copy of the, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung or whatever it's called, and I was staring at the page and I kept on waiting for it to auto-translate itself into English. And then I realized, um, wait, was my brain being lazy or was I being smart or what's going on here? And the fact remains that there's an online translation for just about anything. Um, I don't know my car's license plate number. I don't know the year in which the Japanese cult film Tampo Po was made. Uh, I could have it in a flash, you get the point. Um, the fact is that we are all now kind of smooped, and the future is even smoopeder. Next word is Zwischendingen, which is German. It means between things. And I think uh, right now the, what de demarks the present and what will continue in the near future is the sense that we know that we're in between two pivotal points in history. We just don't know what those two points are. The first one might well be 9-11, but I think one of the role of the artist or the creator at the moment is to figure out or try and imagine what that next point is that we're going to be between. Uh, next word, cyphoria. And this guy that worked in China, he had a picture of his son on his desk. So I said, oh, how old is he? Seven. And well, what's the big difference between you at that age, or you, him at that age and you at that age? And he said, oh, that's easy. He believes that the internet is the real world. And um, in a, well, are you ever, what do you think of that? I said, well, I eventually will come to that same conclusion. It just takes longer for me to get there. Uh, next, word, ebulliophobia. Uh, if you're Japanese, you might know this word. It's fear of bubbles. And we're all sort of, the last 10 years, one great big roller coaster of bubbles to make some metaphors. And of course, there's also uh, ebulliolaria, which is to be sick of bubbles and wish they would all just go away. And that leads to the third one, which is bullyaholism, which is in its weird way as a culture, we're addicted to bubbles and we want to know what the next one is, where it's going to come from, what's going to trigger it. This takes you into, I met a guy who worked the floor at that Chinese factory and he was an avid capitalist and he said, well, did you know that no two nations on earth that contain a McDonald's restaurant have ever been at war with each other? And he used that as a validating thing for capitalism. Now, here's where you start getting the big thread. There's graciation, which is the almost overnight evisceration of a large chunk of the middle class of any given culture. Um, right now, it seems to be happening in Cyprus. And it seems to be something that's going to keep on happening, which is a part of a process I call A-classification, which is that, OK, you get plucked out of the middle class, but you're not really a proletarian. You're not a working class person. You're not. Uh, what are you? And so we're headed in this new, weird world of A-classification where everyone is turning into a sort of a mono-generational, globally monolithic A-class. Um, I have this expression, um, poverty without the internet would be truly dreadful. And I think part of the de defining class, things about being A-class is that the internet, make, the internet makes it all better for you. Detroitus, it's a well-known phobia, it's called the fear of Michigan. <laughs> now the thing about Michigan, it kind of got to the future first and we all kind of know it. Um, Detroitus 
it is the queasy feeling that it's too late to fix whatever little bit of the economy is left after having shipped most of it away to China. Detroitus is the fear of roughly 10 million primates needing 2,500 calories a day, sitting on top of a cold rock in the middle of the North American continent with nothing to do all day except go online and go shopping from jail. The thing about Detroitus is that it forces us to, to ponder the meaning of being alive at all. We wake up, we do something, we go to sleep, and we repeat it about 22,000 times, and then we die. Thank you, Michigan. We go to, well, we all know what this is, the American dream. And I, I'm wondering, the American dream might be the, the notion that the future and the middle class are inextricably linked. And if one of them goes, so will the other. And then we have the upgraded version, which is the American dream platinum, which is the notion that eternity and the middle class are inextricably linked. And if one goes, then so will the other. And of course, we all know what this one is, chinosis, which is the niggling sensation that China probably is the future. It's the notion that North America is going to become what China is now ceasing to be, which is a place you might as well work for 30 cents an hour making baubles because there's absolutely nothing else left to do. Uh, the US is run by politicians, and China is run by economists. The next word, fertility. And this is, we may well look back on the 20th century and the fact that unless your economy had 3% unemployment and everyone else working 40 hours a week at a job, it seems like a good idea now, but we could look at, back on this as being a really cruel and stupid thing, sort of the way we look at now children tying thread in Victorian yarn mills. Um, the whole notion of being employed, uh, working, labor, having a job, uh, it's all entering the realm of fertility. We have centrosis, which is um, the inability to view a society as being successful uh, without a large uh, and thriving middle class. There's suburbulation, which is a cross between suburbia and dissimulation, which is uh, the overuse of the aspirational middle class and its imagery to convey to what remains of the middle class that it isn't doomed. Uh, it's a very common election tactic in the Western world. This next word, now, the Smiths and Morrissey said that every day is like Sunday, but actually, in the future, every day is a Thursday. Um, because as we continue to further route the middle class, uh, to live in a state of permathers is to be a financial castaway in a world without retirement, uh, a perpetual fast food job of the soul. Um, by the way, I looked it up, and no one has ever written a song with the word Thursday in its title. That's really random. <laughs> we have the post-analog condition uh, with uh, hamburger, we homogenize cows. With uh, buns, we homogenize wheat. With the clock, we homogenize time. And with the internet, I'm getting this very strange feeling that we have finally managed to homogenize people. We're going to see where that goes. We have slacternity. Again, it is the surprisingly cheerful future in which Poverty might not be that bad, really, just as long as you have a really good Wi-Fi connection. And the last word we have here is Stuart. Stuart is a companion word to sm smooped. Um, Stuart describes a special futuristic kind of stupidity. Stuart describes your current level of intelligence in the absence of the Steward is a word that describes your current level of intelligence in the absence of the internet nearby as a tool. So to be steward is to know you're smart. It's just that you can't be smart at that exact moment. <laughs> and we all know what it feels like to be steward. Uh, the most common form of steward occurs when you try to show someone something on your computer, whereupon it promptly freezes, leaving you to kill 120 seconds while your computer comes back to life. Uh, another common form of steward is to be at the start of a presentation like this, only to have your laptop or screen not communicate, leaving you in front of 100 or so human beings feeling red-faced and oh-so-steward. Um, anyhow, uh, we're not being steward here this afternoon. We are being smart. I like to think of ourselves as smart here. Um, the show must go on. 
Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Schumann, you are the host with the most. Where are you? Right. He's over there holding a sign saying, like, hurry up. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for having me, and I hope we learned a bit about today and tomorrow here.